Hey, good morning. Um, we just wanted to talk about another tool that we use for our sim racing. And, um, you know, we've covered the important things. The first one we covered was the pedals that we use. We use Husingfeld Sprint Pedals, and we've added the D-Nut Stuff um, Brake Pedal Mod, Throttle Mod, and the Clutch Mod to it. And that has really been a huge, huge improvement for us out on the racetrack. Uh, you can check that video out in our channel as well, or you can go to FritoSportRacing.com um, forward slash reviews, and uh, feel free to shoot me any questions about that. On top of that, we also covered the SHH shifter, which uh, it's a two-in-one solution for the many cars that we drive. You know, we we tend to drive all sorts of cars, whether it's tin tops, open wheels, rally, road course, um, and so on. So. With that in mind, it was really crucial for us to have a two-in-one solution where we can go from H pattern shifting to sequential shifting. So now that we covered pedals, covered the shifter, obviously we have a direct drive wheelbase. It's the Fanatic CSL DD. Um, it's been great, nice upgrade from what we had. Um, you know, we, we're not at that level where we need crazy amount of, of uh, force from our wheelbase. So we're going to talk about something else right now, something that maybe some drivers may not think it's so crucial to have, but I have found that going from this rig, my PC rig, to say a, a console rig where you don't have the access, the access to so many peripherals that can help you, um, really makes a difference. I mean, I don't have the funds to go for a motion rig, and I don't know that I would just because when you start getting into that, that price point where the motion rigs come in, um, I look at that to me like going back with that kind of money, going back to being on the real racetracks. Um, you know, when you're sinking thousands and thousands of dollars, to me, I could be, that could be money towards suspension or a couple of track days. So with that in mind, I just wanted to share these uh, things that I've also been looking at and have been using for, for quite a while now. And I honestly think it has made a huge difference for me, especially in, uh, let's say, iRacing, where um, you don't have that, that seat of pants feel where you need to kind of feel that. You know, I'm, I don't have motion, like I said, so I needed something else. I needed a solution that was going to work for me. And that is the rumble motors provided by Sim3D. Uh, Sim3D is a company owned by Calvin then and um, Brian Holmes was uh, r really nice to you know fill me in on that basically when I think Calvin was um, starting up that company so I know there's a, a wait time to receive these products but I'll tell you it's definitely worth the damn wait man it, it's uh, something that has made a difference especially in cars where you might have a tire that's not necessarily a full slick like the um, Ford Mustang FR500S on iRacing, uh, there that car feels like you really need to feel what the front and rear tires are doing through a corner and when. Also, another thing that has really been helpful is the um, the pedal motors, the seat motors. So let's just talk about the pedal motors really quick. Um, I will provide some images uh, in a minute here about the way that I have things set, but basically the brake pedal uh, rumble motor it, I, I use it solely for ABS so obviously that's not going to help you in cars that don't have ABS like the the GT1 Aston Martin the GT1 uh, Corvette um, the Spec Racer Ford you know cars that don't have ABS I don't get any uh, feedback from the brake pedal you know but obviously we have used the Husingveld sprints and the software to avoid brake lockup um, the throttle pedal, I have it set to um, give me feedback in pit lane at up to a certain RPM, just to let me know that the car is running, the engine is running, you feel that. So when I've been sitting in uh, on the grid in real life, you know, you feel the, r the rumble of the engine, you know, your car's on, you know, you're ready to go. And then as I start moving, you know, obviously you're going to be feeling other things. So. Like I said, the throttle pedal does RPMs at a certain RPM, so the Bremel motors are spinning. The brake pedal, for me, it's for ABS, and I use it more or less as a signal to let me know that I am into the ABS system, it is activated, and then I can then modulate so that I'm not just smashing the brake, you know, and it allows me to balance the car through a corner knowing 
that the Mustang is starting to hit that ABS uh, zone in the system and then I'm able to then modulate a little, rebalance the weight of the car, the weight transfer and get through corners effectively. Um, I think it also helps you save tires, you know. Um, on top of that, we have um, rumble motors. We have three under the seat, one in the front, two in the corners of the of the seat, and then I also have one on my uh, on the seat backing on the lower back area. I guess you would say. So I use those definitely for wheel spin, um, you know, wheel slide. So tire slide also to feel rumble strips uh, changes in surface like in dirt rally 2.0 you can get into some corners and you can feel the rear end sliding over the gravel and it the rumble motors kick up pick up more and more um, I'll show some of those settings so let's uh, let's just go ahead and jump into that and I can continue talking about what I feel with each one of these different rumble motors um, these rumble motors that Callum provides also come with a small box. I believe an Arduino board is in there and there are four ports on one box and then that go to each motor. Um, you, obviously you can also check out his website and see what else he offers. I also run a wind sim kit. I'm not going to cover that right now. We're mostly focused on the rumble motors. The wind sim obviously is for me when I use VR, I have one uh, up above the center screen and it just blows cold air because I'm in a hot room up here. So. Um, let's check out these rumble motors. I'm going to show an image right now and I'll show a little video of, of how they activate and how they work. So let's uh, check that out real quick. <clears throat> so you can see here, um, if you look on the upper left image here, you have the control box. And that's the SIM 3D control box. You see there's a USB cable coming out of it going to the PC. You see on the left hand side of the box, uh, there are the four different cables that come from the rumble motors that I have obviously I have I mentioned that I have several rumble motors so I most likely would need an additional box I have some of the rumble motors that are not plugged in right now underneath my seat because I need extra ports so I might be purchasing another box here pretty soon but let's talk about um, what we have going on with the pedal motors you can see I have the Husenfeld sprints and you can see that the brake and the throttle are the only two pedals that have the rumble motors attached. Um, like I said, the brake pedal, for me, it should be ABS only. That's what you get from a track car, a rally car. Um, in real life, my, my track car had no ABS, so it was literally lock up and <laughs> that's when you know you went too far. But it's really nice for cars like the MX-5 the Mustang, um, the GT3 cars, you have that ABS and like I said, it's kind of a, a signal to me to let me know that I'm too deep into the system, back off a little bit and then apply a brake again and that helps you balance the weight of the car and also helps you get the car slowed down and through the corners, you know, if you're trail braking, you'll know to then be able to make brake bias adjustments too if you're kicking on that ABS system too much, you know. Um, then the RPM, like I said, it's for me, it's just about knowing the the engine is on in VR sometimes. Um, you're in pit lane and you don't realize or you're on the grid and you need to, you feel that engine, you know? It also provides realism. Um, now, if you take a look at the right-hand side of the top right uh, image here, you see that's the front under the seat and that obviously is connected. So that, that one there, um, I use that for feeling gear shifts I use it for wheel slip, um, curb feel, bumps, things like that. Um, now if you take a look here, let me uh, close this video, the webcam really quick so you can see the rear under seat. And you can see the rear under seat, yes we also run a, a butt kicker here on our Obuda Revolution rig. It's an older rig, but luckily I was able to mount that there on one of the cross beams. Now, aside from that, you can see that the rear under seat rumble motors, those two are not connected right now. I have used them in the past, and um, it definitely does help. You can use SimHub to then activate those and give you the left and right, or you know, you can do obviously isolated uh, left front, right front, left rear, right rear for the wheels and how things feel. You know, you can really make things to where you feel each corner of the car as it's um, going through a circuit or sliding around the corner in a rally but um, 
like I said, currently I don't have those plugged in. I have the brake pedal, the throttle pedal, and I have the front seat motor and the rear lower back motor. You can see the rear lower back motor is uh, plugged in and that one also I have set for um, feeling the wheel friction, you know, wheel slides, uh, lockups, things like that. So, so as you're going through some corners, let's say you're going through a um, through Interlagos and you're going through some of the sweeping corners there. In the Mustang, if I'm pushing, I'm, I went in too deep, I'm using too much speed, I'm feeling that the car is then sliding on the tires and either you're getting some understeer or oversteer, you'll be able to feel one more than the other and then you'll know how to be able to correct that. As you go through the corner, you'll be able to modulate the throttle and the braking so you can balance the car. You know, like Andretti said in the past, you know, you use the brakes to turn and I believe in that big time because that really does allow you to do a lot of balancing of the car. It allows you to save your tires. You don't push the car so far. And like I said, when, you, when you're used to real uh, track driving or spirited driving, whatever you want to call it, um, you really need more. Y you can't always just get your feedback from the wheelbase, from the force feedback. You need to have a little more that makes it feel more realistic. And for me, this, is, this has been a solution for me that has been affordable, reliable, and obviously has improved my, uh, I'm not going to say lap times, but it has improved the driving experience and it has definitely, it has made me faster because I've been able to tell when I'm doing too much, going too deep into a corner, uh, knowing how to adjust for like, let's say at Mossport, uh, you know, Canadian Tire Motorsports Park, turn two. A lot of people wash out over that over that corner and go out into the grass. I've been able to go over that and as the road rises you're able to then feel what the car is doing. If you're starting to get a little lightweight in the car you can then provide a little bit of brake and you'll know how much brake is too much brake. You don't want to over slow the car but you do want to get it rotated so you can find the grip and be in that window where the tires are working, the car is loaded up properly and you're able to exit out of that corner with um, some momentum. So let me now show you um, a couple of images here that we're going to take a look at. So these are the rumble motors. They're great. You can go to sim-3d.co.uk, uh, as you can see on the screen, and you can see the different packages that Calvin offers. Uh, he's got different throttle and p basically pedal mods with these rumble motors for different pedal sets, not just who's in build sprints. There's Thrustmaster, Logitech, all sorts, you know. Um, you can get the seat rumble motors which I have here and honestly you know I didn't want to drill into my uh, my seat so you can order the very tough 3M double sided tape that's what I used you apply it and even though they rumble they've stuck on for a long time and it doesn't dampen the effect really you'll see how low I have some of my settings in uh, sim hub here in a minute so let's pull that up let's see here so we're just gonna put this over the top and you can see this is the Shake It Motors um, section of SimHub. And you can see I don't run them very high. When ABS is active, I the strongest I have it is set to 40%. Obviously, I don't have everything here. If I had more rumble motors, you know, like how people have butt kickers on each corner of the rig. And, and to me, you know, one butt kicker is great. But when you start spending the money on each corner, it really adds up, you know, and if you're going, if you're going to put like five butt kickers on your rig, then maybe you're starting to cross over into that motion territory. I don't entirely know. Like I said, I'm focusing on rumble motors here. Um, you can see the gear shift, 35%. It's not, it's not very high. These are strong motors. I had a set of Fanatic V1 pedals and it had the rumble motor on the brake. To me, it wasn't strong enough. To me, it did not provide much feel at all. And I use... Uh, Puma Speed Cats. I've used uh, different racing boots and you know they're thin and I can feel these motors a lot more than I could ever feel anything that came OEM from Fanatic. So aside from the ABS active 40% on the brake pedal, the gear shift 35% which I use under the front of the seat and I think also on the lower back um, of the seat uh, back that has also helped to provide you know when you're shifting you feel the gears you know whether you're engaging paddles any kind of shifting you do 
Um, you also have a 31% here on the uh, missed gears. Let me turn the webcam off again so you can see. And uh, uh, you can see here the road impacts, road rumble, road vibration, simulated road texture. Uh, they're all set to different things. You know, the 50% is the road rumble, which is it provides a localized rumble for curbs, grass. So you really feel that. The minute you drop a tire, you feel it, and then you're able to gently adjust, keep your car on track. Like I say, honestly, going from a rig with these to a rig that does not have them, oh man, you really feel uh, disconnected when you don't have these. You get the feedback from the wheel, but it's just not enough. So to be able to have the feedback that you get in a real car, we're not getting the motion and whatnot, but we're getting that feel of the road texture, which is just another positive in my mind. So you can see these are the shake it motors, um, the effects profile. You can always click on them and test them. And then um, let's also pull up this guy here. So this is the output selection and you can see it's Arduino motors and fans. Um, if you look on the right hand side, it says uh, four motors are connected. Channel one is already being used by the wind plugin. <clears throat> so if you look here, you can see that channel four obviously is on and it's at 99% and that is my ABS active. So that obviously is the brake pedal. We look at channel three and those are going to be the two rumble motors beneath my, um, the two rumble motors beneath the seat. So you have the gear grinding, gear shift, jump landing, and uh, you know, road effects, uh, the curbs, uh, wheels, slides, lockups. You feel that and it's just, like I said, it's been amazing. So in the cars that don't have ABS, I solely rely on the seat feel of those rumble motors. So if I'm in a, uh, let's say a Lotus 79 or I am in a Spec Racer Ford, you know, or a Camel GTP, um, you know, the Nissan, that really helps me to know what the car is doing because I can't rely on ABS. I'm relying on the car feel through the corners. And as those rumble motors kick in, I'm thinking, oh, wow, I'm using up my tires. I need to be a little more gentle through this corner. I need to enter a little differently. And it definitely has helped me with the Mustang to really know what that car is doing. The BMW, the GT4, this week we're uh, running it at the Ringmeister, uh, was doing a time trial there. And that was really beneficial to to feel the car sliding through corners, you know, feeling when I'm touching a curb and, and being able to then lift a little, get on maybe 10% brake or, or, you know, do a little throttle kick as long as I'm braking, trail braking through the corner feeling that balance of the car and feeling how it's affecting the tires and the ABS is crucial. Then it allowed me to back off the brake bias if I needed to, if I felt like it was coming on too strong in the front. So, um, but yeah, you can see here, I mean, this is the Shake It Motors output selection in SimHub. Uh, if you were to scroll down, you would then see the other channels for the throttle and um, things like that. Like I said, channel one is being taken up by the wind sim and that's something we may cover later on. But um, channel two is just RPM, it's further down. This is just an image, so I can't scroll. But further down, it's the RPMs and that's on. Channel three obviously shows gear grinding, gear shift, jump landing, and if you were to scroll down, you would see the road texture, curves, and all of that. Channel four, ABS active. So now let me just show you what the motors look like in action. It's just a short video clip. And um, I was behind the rig filming this while well, my wife was pressing the, the mouse clicking on the test now uh, blue lettering there for the brake pedal so you'll be able to see them rotate but like I said these have two motors one on each side that are spinning you know these counterweights are spinning and that's causing that rumble effect um, I will say I've had them for quite a while now and you really don't have to do much maintenance at all but I would say just like with anything on your rig you know after a lot of use and and a lot of racing and driving just like with any car you have to check things you have to go over things you check make sure your lug nuts are tight make sure that your brake calipers are tight you check brake lines you check any vibrating parts you know you check engine mounts all sorts of things like that in a real car so with these every once in a while I, i'll go behind the rig and i'll check the pedals and i'll make sure that through the vibration that the mounting points have not become loose um you know you most likely would want to check to the seat you know, 3M double-sided tape is extremely strong, but it's possible that eventually, from all the vibration, you know, it could work itself loose and you may need to replace it. 
I have not had to do that yet, but I do check them. So let me show you uh, the last thing I want to show you here. Try to make this uh, not too long, but take a look here. Let me get my face out of the way so you can see how these are activated. So here we go. Look at this. So this is just what, what they do here. So with that in mind, I just wanted to show everybody another important tool that I feel I can use. It's definitely bang for buck. You might have to wait a while because, uh, you know, Calvin does this. He's a sim racer and he does this for the community. Prices are very good. Um, he has button boxes, wind sim kits, rumble motors, obviously for all sorts of uh, pedals. And it just goes on and on, you know, and the support is excellent. They have a Discord and a lot of guys chime in there and they can also provide you profiles for sim hub or um i believe uh, srs is the other software that's used but um i've stuck with sim hub i'm very happy with it and like i said i mean this has just been another tool that has been useful for me in my sim racing that has allowed me to have more realism improve my driving and get a feel for the different cars that i drive the whole variety of cars that i drive and uh, has really made it instrumental, I think, in our accomplishments in 2022. Uh, 2023, we love it. We're still using them, and we will continue to uh, support these brands, you know, the nut stuff for the brake pedal mods, the throttle mod, the clutch mod, SHA shifter. Big thanks to Mike Nickham for uh, the help in acquiring that. Sequential mode in, in the GT Challenge, uh, VET GT1, and the Aston Martin GT1 ha has been amazing. Uh, you can see videos of us racing that car using the sequential. Um, then we switch to the Ford Mustang and do H pattern, you know, or the Lotus 79. And um, this Monday, the 24th, we'll be hosting Formula V at Road America and VIR. So like I said, we jump into everything. And to be able to have these tools, I think I feel very pleased to where we're at now. So with that in mind, just remember, enjoy motorsports, um, enjoy sim racing, be smart about it. Hopefully this helps. I've had a lot of trial and error since uh, I was sim racing back in like 98. And then we had a gap of time where we didn't. And then we came back 2015, I racing and you know, you have a wheel stand, a G27. So from that, I think we have grown and we've made, we've done trial and error. We've gotten advice. We've uh, had very useful friends and uh, sponsors and supporters who have helped us really grow to where we are today. And you know small team we got to help each other out and we really appreciate all the work that everybody puts into this so if anybody has any um, useful comments anything that will be helpful and um, beneficial and improve this community the sim racing community I appreciate it you know so with that in mind go get out there do some racing and uh, try to make this as realistic as possible as you can we can't always get out to the racetracks we know how much fees have increased in real life so this is just something that um, has been amazing for us to help us grow and continue to enjoy motorsports in that just a different form. So with that in mind, have a good weekend this weekend. Enjoy uh, all the racing on TV, but get out there and do some racing yourself. Hopefully we'll see you out there on the track. So see you guys. Take care. Peace.